Chairman, if, if we cannot be recognized, I move to adjourn. The American people. Chairman, I move to adjourn. September 2018, at the U.S. Senate hearings for the confirmation of Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court, more than 200 arrests of demonstrators there were made, and many senators interrupted the proceedings, the first one even happening within the first minute of the hearings. You are out, you're out of order, I'll proceed. We cannot possibly move forward, Mr. Mr. Chairman. You're not going to be able to put together the kind of compromises in government you need to run the country if everybody is threatening everybody else. Or, you know, we've seen in the uh, Supreme Court hearings of these paid demonstrators coming into the committee room and screaming. And uh, one uh, Democrat said, that's the voice of democracy. Really? Screaming in a committee room? That's, that's how we're going to run things now? You can't run a government that way. The reason for the unhinged behavior of the left during the Kavanaugh hearings? It's about power. So the progressive left has, since 1965 and even prior to that, used the Supreme Court as an ability to legislate from the court. We look at Article I, Section 1 of the U.S. Constitution, and it says all legislative authority is given to Congress. Who does that exclude? The, the executive branch and also the judiciary. They have maintained that the court can simply legislate from the bench. And so now they are so worried that they are going to lose their progressive majority and their judicial activism that they will stop at nothing to make sure that conservative originalists are not appointed to the bench. This started with the attack against President Trump to not even get him elected. And then this started with the whole nuclear option that had to be in place to get Justice Gorsuch on the bench. And then when all else failed, they waged an all-out attack against Justice Brett Kavanaugh that was not grounded in reality, not grounded in due process or truth or fact. Brett Kavanaugh was someone that has been an obvious candidate for the Supreme Court for years because he does have such an amazing record and at the, at the, the uh, D.C. Circuit Court as a jurist who is faithful to the law, faithful to the Constitution, and exceptionally good at conveying that case to other judges. In their book, Justice on Trial, about the Kavanaugh hearings, authors Molly Hemingway and Kerry Severino chronicled the attacks that came against a man with a sterling reputation. They were digging for dirt on him. They didn't find any. They were digging for dirt on him when they were attacking him when his was first nominated for the D.C. Circuit. They didn't find any. So he had been uh, through this scrutiny many times before, and I think it was pretty clear to everyone that this guy's squeaky clean. A few years ago, we were very familiar with the uh, Clinton machine's politics of personal destruction. Uh, but then we saw it come to life in the hearings on Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the U.S. Supreme Court. All these women came forward claiming he had abused them sexually, and none of the, the, none of the uh, testimonies were corroborated. Several were withdrawn. Several of the women admitted they'd lied because they were pro-abortion activists and didn't want him on the court. Uh, I think uh, it's time to sue people for this kind of behavior. One of the attacks on Brett Kavanaugh came from a letter Christine Blasey Ford sent to Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein, accusing him of sexual misconduct, which was then leaked to the press. First, they attacked him with disingenuous attacks on his actual record, um, but they were misconstruing his cases and lying about what he stood for as a judge. When that didn't work, that's when leaks, and again, we still haven't investigated, and no one, no one seems to be uh, spending enough time on who did leak this letter from Christine Blasey Ford um, that she said she didn't want to go public. And we have a lot of uh, missing questions as to how that got out, but we, know, we do know that it was brought out in a way calculated to effect the maximum political damage on that nomination. If they can't get the courts to do what they want, they're gonna to try to discredit the courts. As Deborah Katz, who was Christine Blasey Ford's attorney said, we wanna put an asterisk next to his name. We want to discredit these justices and I think they ultimately want to threaten and intimidate the justices. The only way uh, that the court can get away from these, uh, these attacks on their own institution is to capitulate and to vote the way the left wants them to do. But unfortunately, that would be the ultimate 
uh, betrayal of the American people, of the Constitution, uh, to allow that kind of political influence to dominate the direction the court goes. One of the reasons Molly Hemingway and I wrote Justice on Trial is because we don't want this to become the new normal. Who on Trump's list right now of potential Supreme Court nominees wants to put their family through this kind of, of a uh, confirmation process? I worry that that is part of the incentive that the left has for doing it. That it's not just can we block Brett Kavanaugh, can we put an asterisk next to his name, but can we dissuade some of our best and our brightest men and women on this list um, from being even willing to step up if they're called upon for public service. That would be a real tragedy uh, and, and would be one that has a lot more impact even than Kavanaugh's seat alone. One of the most important issues for voters to decide on the future of America is who gets to choose the judges and who gets to confirm them. Election 2020 is unbelievably important because on the left there's more and more radicalism, the kind of radicalism that I don't think we've ever seen before. And there's been some previous radical periods. I hope is in a restoration of a true constitutional balance where we actually have three branches of government so that the courts are actually interpreters of the law, not creators of the law, and that they respect the legislative branch and the executive branch, and we have three separate branches. I think that will go a long way to protecting our freedom. The president uh, has had the opportunity to uh, commit uh, and follow through on some promises made as, as, as a candidate. You know, so in the, in the case of the courts, promises made, promises kept. Uh, he's had two opportunities and, and has had two great appointments to the Supreme Court. He appointed originalists or, or, who in fact believed in judicial re restraint and who understood the difference between the courts and its benches uh, and the legislative halls of state legislatures and the Congress. In 2020, uh, the, the courts are still uh, in play and voters should actually give the president an opportunity to finish the job.